Good afternoon and welcome to another of John Mike's uh, virtual tours of Scotland. Uh, we are in Edinburgh at the moment beside the water of Leith. So we're going to have a walk and point out some of the uh, geology and history of this ancient site for uh, milling uh, with water power back in the day. Out St Bernard's Well. Now, in the 1790s, uh, they thought uh, the water here was going to be very good health-wise. Uh, three schoolboys from George Herriot's school had discovered a spring here nearby and that got a lot of interest. And the landowner at the time uh, commissioned a, a famous character from Edinburgh's past uh, called uh, Alexander Naismith. And he, uh, as an artist, an architect, developed this amazing classical temple that you can see here. Now I'm just going to walk up the steps. Once again I've got the McNaughton Tartan kilt on today. It's called pleated to stripe where it's not uh, pleated to the tartan pattern, it's more the stripe in the tartan. At the moment it's a very amazing time to guide down here in the Dean village because the autumnal colours coming through in the changing colours of the leaves, even falling as I speak. Now looking at this here, this statue is called Hygieia and uh, she was the goddess, the Greek goddess of health, so very appropriate that uh, healthy waters, spring waters, would be uh, marked by such a statue here. So I was Andrew Naismith, he, he uh, developed this and he was inspired by a temple in Italy called the Temple of Sibyl in Tivoli in Italy and it's what we call Doric columns where you can see the columns are quite plain they don't have the really floral top that uh, some of the different capitals do have and uh, the waters here were very much in favour for people to come for all sorts of uh, problems, illness, disease, disability, as well as uh, rheumatism and things, you know, we take uh, medicines for today. But there is a famous quote, and I can't resist uh, giving you this, because the spring water, it was described as this spring and flavour has a slight resemblance and flavour to the washings of a foul gun barrel. So that wasn't pulling its punches and telling you what that might do to your health by taking these waters, as opposed to making you healthy, probably was going to make you very unhealthy. So uh, it's closed to the public, uh, but on certain open days people can get access and it's got wonderful internal decorations, a pump room here at St Bernard's Well. St Bernard was a 12th century uh, monk, Cistercian monk. Uh, although it is not thought that he came to Scotland, he was uh, very much a figure in Europe, but it is said that one of the monks from Curus Abbey, from the Cistercian Abbey there, came and lived a hermit's life quite close to where the St Bernard's Well is. And it was popular around here, a tendency to call the different districts and streets St Bernard's. We've got the St Bernard's School, St Bernard's Crescent, and all over in this area. So the, the name has stuck. So we've got the Water of Leith on my right hand side. And this is uh, described as the Dean, D-E-N-E, -E, because from Gaelic, Dean was seen as being a deep gorge, a deep valley, and uh, that is what we've got here. But we have uh, changed it slightly to be D-E-A-N today. And you can see the water rushing through the foliage, through the leaves there on the side. On the left-hand side, you can see the buildings of Edinburgh's new town, the Western New Town, the Murray Estates, as they were called. And you may just get a glimpse of the architecture through the trees up there. Now, all along here, going back as far as the 12th century and beyond, right up until the 19th century, there were mills here. And if you look carefully, you can see some stonework believed to be the grain, the old grain silos, because they used to mill grain down here for flour. 
And the mills also were snuff mills, uh, paper mills, cloth mills, and at one stage there were 70 mills altogether scattered along uh, towards the Dean village where we're heading to just now. The landscape, very iffy, going back hundreds of years. They were always uh, building and uh, producing against the possible uh, movement of the landscape with landslides because when a lot of water fell in Edinburgh, uh, this cliffside was unforgiving and a lot of the earth and rocks could move down. So if you are to look carefully up towards the architecture, you will see these arches and these arches many will think are to do with the foundations of these tenement buildings, but they're not. They were a barricade to actually stop the movement of the wet soil to prevent landslips and preserve the mills that were down here. We look to the right hand side is another well. And this one is called St George's Well. Now St George's Well uh, if you look carefully up in the architecture, you can see a circle with 1810, and that's certainly the case. This was uh, founded and built after the St Bernard's Well that we just passed, and called St George's Well because it was commemorating the Golden Jubilee of George III. And it was a kind of gift by the builder to commemorate that event. Now, likewise, the water here was pretty atrocious. People used to think that if water didn't taste very good sometimes it must be doing you some good but uh, that was a misconception and the water was described as being inky as it was tasting like ink so you wouldn't want to be drinking that water too much and the water sources from both these wells today are totally condemned by our health people. Quite rightly so. We've moved on. So the flow of the water, as you see on the right-hand side, is beginning to get a bit more so. The geology here is very ancient. It goes back 340 million years. The landscape is built on sandstone and uh, coal seams as well, and a lot of uh, heavy uh, volcanic rocks which have been shifted with glacial movement. So a very strong uh, geometrical landscape and it does appeal to me very much. It makes me think of Cezanne and some of these great painters who were interested in structure and geometry in the landscape and you can hear the rush of water now as we come close to where the weirs were built. The weirs to stabilise the water into ponds to power the mill wheels. Now this pillar here marks a division from what was uh, called the Greenland Mill, which is the lands on the right-hand side of the pillar, to what was the Murray Estates on the left-hand side. And that marker is still here today in the, the structure of this pillar and wall, as you can see. It's all bits of uh, stone peeking through the landscape. Residual architecture from these grain silos I was talking about because this was very much where the food came from with the, the production of flour previous to the 19th century. In the 19th century, steam power superseded water power and because the grain was coming in to the port of Leith and the coast then, they didn't really need to have uh, milling happening here because they could use steam power to do it. So that is when it all became, began to uh, calm down a bit. But there were still mills here up until 1971, would you believe? And when Joe takes over, he'll be passing what used to be Bell's Mill. And Bell's Mill was uh, milling sawdust into a consistency to make it very good for the linoleum process and uh, there was a huge dust explosion in that mill in 1971, as late as that. So at that point, the writing was seriously on the wall that this was going to be the end of 
the milling industry here in the Dean Village. Now, a bit of a story about this structure. Because the owner of lands on the other side of the Water of Leith was a man called John Learmonth. And uh, in the early 19th century, he was very powerful. He had made his money out of building coaches to transport wealthy people around the new town. He made a fortune and he was able to few the lands on the other side. Now, he had the idea to develop houses and buildings on his lands to generate even more income. So what he needed was a connection between the new town of Edinburgh on the south side and his estates on the northern side. And eventually, one Thomas Telford was brought in to develop what we know today as the Dean Bridge. Now, I would like to draw your attention to the holes, because there's lots of holes you see here. And eh, there's about several holes in each block of stone. And if you are to look over there, I don't know if Joe can pick it up on the camera, it is like a gorgonzola cheese because of all these holes. And the reason for them was the shifting of massive blocks of stone was hand powered through enormous cranes called grab claws. And the grab claw had to hold on to something and it was the hole. And uh, this enabled them to build the bridge. It's a masterpiece of engineering, this amazing bridge. It is 105 uh, feet uh, from the top to the bottom, which is probably about 38 meters or something like that. And uh, here the rush of water. Thomas Telford, a great engineer. It's quite difficult sometimes to get far enough back from this Dean Bridge to appreciate the architecture of it because of the trees and the valley. But if you're familiar with the Lothian Bridge, which is on the A68 south of Edinburgh, you can maybe get back and get an idea of how these wonderful structures were. Now, it was originally planned, this bridge, to only have three arches, but the nature of the landscape, especially on the right-hand side here, as we look towards it, and I said earlier, this had a tendency for landslides and was very unstable so they had to put another arch in so it's actually got four arches and it's said that they actually used to ch charge people to go over the bridge but I'm not going to say for sure if that was the case but it is a great thing now we're going to have a look over the wall finally before I hand over to Joe if I'm in the right spot yep now, one of our viewers, uh, who was active in cleaning up the water of Leith, drew my attention to this bronze otter. And I don't know if you can see it very well, but just on that stone, uh, beyond the stone where you can see the foaming water, uh, is a sculpture of an otter. Okay, so there is an art connection with the water of Leith also.